All right. Hello, everybody. I'm Brooks Rayford, CEO of NC Tech, and welcome to this briefing on the release of our quarterly leadership poll. Uh, as some of you know from past sessions, uh, we have built off some spot polling we did during the early months of COVID, and then we launched in 2022 a quarterly poll that asked some consistent questions uh, about general business sentiment, like hiring trends, growth, uh, things like that, as well as some questions that might rotate in or out based on current events or issues. The third quarterly poll for 2024 was conducted during the last full week of September, and we're releasing those results today. Uh, later today, you'll be able to find this on our website at nctech.org slash pulse. Uh, we polled nearly 400 people and had a about one-third response rate. The respondents are members of the NC Tech Board of Directors, our Board of Advisors, tech CEOs in North Carolina, and leaders of large tech hubs or sites in North Carolina. Our sponsoring partner from the inception of these polls has been the Stearns Financial Group. Their founder, Dennis Stearns, serves on the NC Tech Board of Advisors, and he joins me today to offer some of his observations from the latest poll. So welcome, Dennis. Thank you, Brooks. Glad to have you. Uh, so I'll walk through the results and highlight some areas where we've seen any shifts in sentiment or activities from the last quarterly poll. Alex on our team will help me move through these slides. So we'll go to the first one. The first few are just demographic questions to give you a flavor of who answered the poll. Uh, we ask about company size, at least North Carolina footprint. And while it's sort of spread out, I would say that this, this skew, the respondents skew a little bit larger company size. Um, you know, most businesses are small and medium size, but you'll see here about 21% are the very large North Carolina footprint of over 1,000 people, uh, 500 to 1,000 is another 10, and so on from there. Uh, but a pretty good chunk, though, are small, 1 to 10, 11 to 100. And this is pretty consistent quarter to quarter. Uh, this one surprised me a little bit. Uh, normally, we have about two-thirds that are headquartered in North Carolina who answer the poll, and that actually reflects our membership. About two-thirds of our members are headquartered in North Carolina. So it's an unusual um, uh, lower representation of headquartered companies this time around, although not too far different. And then we asked uh, the respondents to, to uh, answer the, the role they have in their organization and as is typical, C-suite is dominant. Now we get into the sentiment questions. So uh, we ask about how do you perceive the past quarter uh, for North Carolina's tech sector broadly? So again, not their company necessarily, that's the next question, but how do you perceive it's been for the sector? And the, the distribution here is not terribly different than in the past. There was an increase in slightly disappointing. Um, it had hovered around 9 to 12 percent in recent quarters, and it's bumped up a bit to 15. Uh, the shift seems to be from good to OK and slightly disappointing. So the good shrank a little. Um, OK, some that went to OK, and OK shrank a bit and went to slightly disappointing. So not a major shift, but uh, one that's uh, more than just a couple of points. So maybe some sign of caution there. Now, the next slide is asking about your own organization. And you see here that um, slightly more optimistic. And Dennis, we talk about this every quarter because this always happens. People are a little more, more positive about their own organization. You know, just great went from 4% to almost 14 here. Um, good rocketed up to 53. Disappointing went, went down. Um, and so uh, people tend to be maybe driven by headlines or you know, not so sure how the sector might be doing, but they feel pretty good about their own organization. What are you what are you uh, sensing out there? Well, uh, yeah, no question that um, a lot of the companies that are in our membership are still having pretty good results. Uh, and again, I think that you're right. The headline news sometimes uh, makes you wonder if the rest of the world isn't doing worse. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's true. Well, uh, so this this type of, di of difference is is consistent. Um, so I do think there's just a human nature element to this. Uh, OK, Alex, next slide. Now we look uh, forward. I expect over the next quarter our business will. Uh, very few say decline. Uh, about a third say stay the same. And about two thirds say grow. 
In this one, a slight shift from grow to stay the same. Grow had been in the, I had reached a low to mid 70s in recent quarters, but still uh, the, grow se the grow segment here is on par or a little higher than the first, second, and third quarters of last year. So year over year, this has gone up a bit, uh, which is encouraging. Next slide. This is always an important question people are interested in seeing about uh, hiring going on. So very few are reducing headcount and among the respondents. About 30% are holding steady and 69% uh, are hiring. Um, very similar to past quarters, hiring is one percentage point higher than any past quarter. So hiring actually ticked up slightly here um, and reducing headcount matches the lowest percentage point in any, in any previous uh, quarter. So again, not a major shift, very, very slight, but it's encouraging that this is holding uh, strong. Uh, Dennis, I don't know what you're seeing in the broader business community in terms of hiring or holding steady. Well, again, the uh, tech sector seems to be ahead of some of the other sectors out there. Um, although the uh, employment numbers more recently have still stayed pretty resilient, uh, except that now, instead of having two job openings for every person looking for a job, that was a couple of years ago, now it's down to 1.2 okay. job openings. So it uh, the labor market is getting tighter. Good to note. Okay, next slide. We asked a couple of open-ended questions. So the first one is, what makes you optimistic about the next 12 months? And Dennis, you know that every every uh, time we do this poll, some of the same things appear on the next slide, which, make, which, which are what things make you uneasy. So election is one that tends to show up on both, depending on one's point of view. Uh, lower interest rates is a positive. Business environment in North Carolina, very positive. I thought interesting return to office shows up here. Um, I don't believe I've seen that one before as an optimistic uh, reaction from enough people to warrant it being a top 10 answer. And then, of course, we just talked about job market and hiring, which has a pretty strong representation. Well, in the NC business environment remaining one of the top responses, and that is kind of with uh, Peter Zeehan last night uh, the, of uh, accidental superpower fame. And so he was talking about the fact that North Carolina is one of the exceptional states in the country that has everything converging and going for it. And then he threw up a uh, slide with our region as being one of the hot spots of the future. So uh, definitely, uh, you know, he, he's one to listen to and looking at longer term trends looks pretty positive. Well, that's encouraging for sure. And, and when you say our region, um, you broke up there for a second. Do you mean the triad area where you are? Or do you mean a region of the country? Uh, well, actually, uh, he, the the box that he drew encompassed both the triangle and the triad. Okay. So uh, North Carolina core plus a lot of parts of the triangle. Mm -hmm. uh, and he uh, just talked about the fact that, that from demographics, to technology, to workforce development, that there's just a lot of good reasons to be positive about this region. Great, okay. Well, let's move on then to that next slide, which is what makes you uh, uneasy or what are you concerned about over the next 12 months? Uh, the election, of course, uh, is prominent here. Uh, you see interest rates again appearing. Um, uh, geopolitical has risen a bit, obviously a lot going on in the world right now that's concerning and can have an impact on, on things. I believe just this morning, the, the port strike, uh, did go into effect and, or the dock worker strike went into effect that could have significant, uh, impact on, on the economy. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, lower on the list are layoffs, uh, or hiring and talent acquisition that was kind of relate together as areas of, of concern. And I think I saw macro macroeconomic uh, appear on both slides as well. So again, there's some duplication here because people 
depending on their situation, their business or what have you, might be optimistic about a topic, whereas someone else has concerns or worries. Yeah, and what's interesting is this uh, looks like the heat map of a workshop and streaming webinar we're doing tomorrow called Some of All Fears and What's Causing People Anxiety. So this syncs up pretty well with some of the uh, anxieties that are out there. And history tells us that 96% of the time you should ignore geopolitical issues mm -hmm. uh, from both a business and an investment viewpoint. Uh, there's some evidence that maybe we ought to pay a little more attention this time. We do have a, a um, comment in the Q&A section. It's a good one. We, I think we'll look at how we word the question maybe in the future. But the question is, is there a way to differentiate hiring that addresses turnover versus hiring for base employee growth? So the way the question is posed is, uh, are you hiring? Are you laying off? Or are you not hiring? And th that doesn't really leave an opportunity to answer, well, we're hiring, but we're hiring because of normal attrition, but we're, we're kind of staying steady. So yes, we're hiring, but not necessarily for growth in base employee count versus we're growing our base employment count. So we'll take a look, uh, whoever posted that, we'll take a look at how we might word that to get a little more clarity about that. Yeah, and, and I was recently at a session with a number of companies that were also working on upgrading. They got who they could get in the pandemic mm -hmm. as new employees. And now they're trying to make sure that everybody's in the right seat on the bus or actually on the right bus itself, as <laughs> Jim Collins used to say. And uh, they're taking a very hard look at who are the C players and uh, who do we, can we find a B or an A player for the same role? Interesting. Interesting. All right. I think that brings us to the end of our content slides. Alex, if you can move us next. Yeah. So uh, that does wrap up the results. Uh, thanks again to the Stearns Financial Group for sponsoring this polling series. And uh, to you, Dennis, for being with us today. A reminder that you can find this recording on our website at nctech.org slash pulse along with the slide deck as soon as we can get them posted. Uh, I'll also email a link to all those who registered this briefing. Uh, but for now, thank you for viewing and we'll see you next time. Thank you all.